You know, there is no pill that you can swallow that will stop a bad background report. Yeah, a lot of times you can just email company like support at checker.com. I would mm -hmm. be like my first option if I just sent that quickly. There's certain aspects, there's certain ways that the very denial, the very rejection, the very mm -hmm. deactivation gives you a right to go after somebody for what you're losing right now. Is there really any way, um, you know, or recourse that drivers have, or is it sort of like you're kind of on your own to figure these things out? Their lawyers are the ones, the charging thousands they use are the ones <laughs> charging a thousand dollars an hour. Yeah. So a consumer that gets wronged by them should be buried. Welcome to the Rideshare Guy podcast, where you will learn about the rideshare and mobility industry straight from Harry Campbell, who's got over five years experience covering the industry and has talked to thousands of drivers. There's no better place to stay up to date, entertained and educated. So let's dive in. All right, Larry P. Smith is a consumer attorney concentrating his practice in the areas of Fair Credit Reporting Act and Fair Debt Collections Practices Violations, as well as consumer fraud claims and lemon law. He is a managing partner at Smith Marco PC. Wow, Larry, your bio really just rolls off the tongue today. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks. How are you? I'm doing well. Sometimes I feel like I stumble through uh, people's bios, but I think uh, yours uh, yours went well. So I'm excited to have <laughs> you on today. And I believe Thanks, this is your second time on the Rideshare Guide podcast, right? Thanks for having me. I appreciate being here. Love to Very help cool. everybody. Well, you know, I've really been a fan of yours and your practice and all the work that you're doing to help drivers mm -hmm. because, um, you know, you, I like to think of you as the deactivation expert when it comes to background checks, right? So if drivers are having issues with background checks and they're deactivated because of that, or they can't get onto the platforms, you are the guy to go to. Is that a fair assessment of who you are? <laughs> Very fair. I know there's a lot of other reasons people get deactivated, but where we yeah. focus is background check, where our firm does consumer rights and, and data, you know, big data is something that we focus mm. on. Background checks is something that where this comes up a lot and that's where we help people. Got it. And I guess for those who may not know, you know, so if you're an Uber and Lyft driver, what what are the main, you know, I guess like barriers to signing up? You have to have a car, you have to get a background check and a social security. Is that kind of the main thing? And obviously when there's issues with the background check, uh, that's where you come in? Yeah. And the background check isn't something you just do once with them, right? Uh, every mm. year that you're on with them, they redo it because they want to make sure that nothing happened in that past year. Obviously, People get tickets, accidents, crashes, arrests, yeah. things happen in a year's time. So they check on you every year because, hmm. you know, it's not like they can monitor you very closely. You're not coming yeah. into an office. You're out there in the field driving around. So yeah, that's uh, yeah. one of the things you've got to be able to not just pass the background check, but maintain their, their, the consistent um, requirements that they have. What are Uber and Lyft looking for in the background check, in your opinion? Two things. Uh, number one, obviously, criminal stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. They're looking to make sure that you haven't committed crimes against, but mostly against people and property. Yep. Uh, you know, because if they see that, uh, that's something that's probably not going to get you the gig, at least in yep. most instances. The other thing is driving history. Mm -hmm. um, one of a part of a background check is your driving here, driving history, your driving record. It's, I mean, mm -hmm. it's actually a statement of who you are too. Are you safe? Yep. Can we trust you? Are you trustworthy behind the wheel of a vehicle? And so that's part of the background check. Got it. So uh, the criminal stuff, the driving history, like those sound like good things to me, right? That the company is checking for those, right? And that, hey, yeah. if you're going to be driving people around, you know, my wife takes Uber, right? If she's being driven around by someone, I want to make sure they they haven't done anything serious on the criminal side. Right. Uh, they have a good driving history. They're safe. So I think it makes sense. I've heard from some drivers that Uber and Lyft are doing sort of more dynamic checks on them at times. Have you heard this? That, you know, they might be pulling the background check more frequently or, you know, if something does pop up at like flags it in the system. Have you heard of that? I I have. I, mm -hmm. I I've, I've I've seen a few instances where uh, I, I want to say like a, I could count them on one hand though to be honest. Yeah. But I've seen a few instances where um, the person like was subjected to a background check and for some reason like um, two months later again and then yeah. a, a month later again and I, I've seen a few people like why am I getting five mm. background checks in a year? Yeah. And, and I don't have an answer for it. Um, I, I don't know if they're being singled out or if there's some kind of alarm yeah. that's going off when the background check's being done. 
Got it. Well, I think it is like I kind of imagine with the technology going forward, you know, that there's more tracking, more data out there, right? And so drivers, you know, you know, I think you kind of have to take your career as a rideshare driver, whether you're full-time or part-time seriously, right? Like, hey, you got to be really careful, no DUIs, you know, try to avoid accidents, try to avoid tickets, right? Because I yeah. think this can and will be a bigger issue in the, for, in, you know, in the future. Like if, you know, like it may not be every year that you get checked. I could imagine like a situation in the future where it's like, I think it's a very sensitive thing uh, yeah. to be honest with you. And I, I mean, I, and I do see rideshare drivers out there driving very carefully and you, you, yeah. you need to, I mean, you, even if you, you could get in an accident, it's not your fault. Yeah. You're sitting still. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And, and so it's just, it's a very sensitive thing. I, I realize that. Yeah, for sure. And obviously, you know, there's sort of the ratings component. You want to be a good driver, careful driver. So you get high ratings, you know, so you don't get into an accident and then have to pay for the repairs and, you know, lose your uh, access. But then also, you know, on the deactivation front, right? Because you don't want to be uh, too, you know, deemed a dangerous driver unsafe and then be deactivated from driving for Uber and Lyft. So right. I think that's really, uh, you know, kind of a good, like we all know that, but I think it's a good reminder for drivers out there to sort of keep this yeah. in mind. Now, I always like to say, you know, signing up for Uber and Lyft, when I signed up uh, nine years ago, I'm a dinosaur in rideshare years, right? It's been a while. Well, um, since I first signed up to drive, but like I always joke, you could, it's so easy. You can sign up from your couch, you know, you press a few buttons, you take a picture and in an ideal scenario, you're approved very quickly. But yeah. I do feel like when issues come up, right, if you get your background check and there's an error, for example, wow, it can really seem like a nightmare for drivers to get this resolved. And I feel like I've heard so many stories from drivers, a lot of whom we forward on to you so that you can, yeah. <laughs> which we'll talk about how you work with them. But like, I guess what's been your experience with drivers? Like does it things kind of like hit the fan if things go wrong in the sign up process in the background check right like is there really any way um you know or recourse that drivers have or is it sort of like you're kind of on your own to figure these things out if no not at all so a couple things first of all you know i i think if you are i, I think it's smart to yeah, and this isn't legal advice this is practical mm -hmm. to, to go in and, and make sure you're on the other platforms too right yep. so if one if you know one thing i've seen i know that they're a lot stricter if you're driving people than food yeah. so if there's something on your background that it might prevent you from driving people around but maybe not goods mm. so you know you want to first things first you know to protect yourself have your backup right yeah go and get on the other platforms if you can uh, but then when you go through the background report and you go through the check and, and you're getting that feedback that, uh oh, there's something wrong with it. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of things you could do. First and foremost, my, my, my first advice is before you even call me, OK, if this mm -hmm. is wrong information that you're looking at and there's yeah. a bunch of different ways they get it wrong and we can go over that. I've done that. I think we did that the last podcast. We can view whatever you want to do. Always but a good there's reminder. There's a bunch of ways they get it wrong, right? They can mix you with somebody else. They could not yeah. report that you had an expungement. They could be completely misreading the record, but whatever it is, um, you find out that they did something wrong. The first thing you do is you go right to the background reporting company. Now I know most of the time it's checker when we're dealing with the rideshare companies. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they use safety holdings, but most of the time you see checker. Um, and, and the first thing you should do, if you get noticed that the report has information on it that's wrong before you call me, before anybody, you go right to checker. Got it. And you tell them, this is what's wrong and why. Yeah. Okay. And if you, and if it's a driving issue, if it's something that was perhaps you had an arrest that you got expunged yeah. and there's documents that you might have or be able to get like this, the expungement order, your driving yeah. abstract, get that, give Send it, it to them. them. Yeah. Do that right away. And the reason why I say you do that right away is because they're covered under the fair credit reporting act. Mm -hmm. This, even though it's not credit reporting, it's background reporting, same law. And under that law, when they, when they put something out there that's false and you tell them, here's, you did something false. Yeah. The, the clock is ticking 30 days mm -hmm. under the law to get right back to you. Interesting. So it's not like you're going to be sitting there waiting for months for them to tell you, mm. when am I going to start that's to drive? A... As soon as you let them know, their clock is starting on 30 mm. days. Got okay. it. That's a good, uh, very handy to know. I did not know that. And I'm, I'm literally while you were talking, I'm, I'm kind of imagining like a lot of times you can just email company like support at checker.com. I would mm -hmm. be like my first option if I just sent that quickly. And then also now I'm on their site and I see that they've got a whole support section and you can submit tickets and things like that. But yeah, I would probably just do both quickly, send an email to support at checker.com. Yeah. 
Um, I, I like that tip a lot. And, uh, you know, sort of one thing you mentioned that I want to double down on is, you know, when it comes to these background checks, right? So driving for Uber and Lyft, you've got people, right? And they're looking at your, you know, a, a whole different things, right? Like we talked about the safety aspect and your driving record and your background, you know, if you've committed crimes. But uh, have you noticed, you know, we've seen a ton of drivers now shifting to food delivery, last mile delivery packages, right? And there's really no customer interaction there, right? Like you don't even look at the customer anymore. You just drop the food off on their door right. and leave. Um, right. So I guess it makes sense that they would be a little less stringent when it comes to what they're looking for. Uh, is that what you found? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I, I see that a lot. And some people will complain to me and they'll say, hey, you know, I'm, I got deactivated from Uber, yeah. but, you know, they're still letting me drive <laughs> Uber Eats. I, I don't get it. Hmm. Oh, and interesting. Say, Quite simply, you're delivering goods. They're not yeah. worried about you delivering you're not going to hurt the goods, you know, you yeah. can hurt a person. <laughs> so they, they, that tends to be something that they'll do. I mean, they could remove mm. you on some platforms, but not all, but they're definitely stricter when it comes to driving human beings around. There's no Got question. It. Well, I think, you know, one of the, the big things I talk about in my book, and I think a lot of drivers know this, you know, in our surveys, we've seen that about two thirds of rideshare drivers do both Uber and Lyft. So I think it's pretty well known. I would love for that number to be 100% because you really want to have, you know, that diversification within a vertical. But I think this is another good reason to convince someone, hey, not only should you be Uber and Lyft, but add a delivery service also. Uber Eats is really easy to add because right. if you're driving for Uber, it's just you click a button and now you're an Uber Eats driver, yeah. right? Because if yeah. you qualify for Uber, you automatically qualify qualify for Uber Eats, but not necessarily the reverse. So I think that's really good, like quick tactical advice for drivers, like, hey, sign up for Uber and Lyft if you're rideshare, but also add a delivery service, um, you know, in case you have an issue with the, uh, the background check or, you know, you're deactivated for some error on the background check. Right. The background check might hurt you on Uber and Lyft, but it might mm -hmm. not hurt you on Uber Eats. So you, you yeah. know, it gives you that, it gives you that chance to continue, yeah. work, right? So your firm, uh, Smith Marco, has worked with a ton of drivers who have been deactivated for an error on their background check. So if I'm a driver, I, you know, go through the process, I see some error on, I, I guess, like, what's the, how do you guys help drivers who have been deactivated for an error on the background check? Like, what's like, quickly walk me through, what's the process? And like, when do I come sure. to you? There's certain, I mean, there's certain aspects, there's certain ways that the very denial, the very rejection, the very mm -hmm. deactivation gives you a right to go after somebody for what you're losing right now. Got it. Okay. Um, the Fair Credit Reporting Act requires that any company that's reporting this information about you utilize all reasonable procedures to assure maximum possible accuracy. Got it. So if they're reporting a person who has the same name as you and they're putting his criminal information on your background mm -hmm. report, which we've seen a whole bunch of times. Yeah, I feel files. like I've gotten a few drivers who have messaged me about that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and we see that. I, I represent a few people who are like, this is not me, and they have mm -hmm. this horrible history. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we see plenty of that. And um, that kind of thing, there's also you know misreading a driving record. Mm. Uh, I've seen a bunch of people Wonderful drivers, career drivers, drove hazmat, drove commercial, yeah. you know, the, the the highest level of driver you could be. And all they did was decide to just not drive those things anymore. Yeah. And the companies are picking up that they've got an invalid license altogether. Got it. Those kinds of those are those are errors that they're making that they should not be making. OK, in mm. other words, that 30 day dispute that you're going to give them, they could have it, but they're already breaking them. When they mix you with somebody else, when they misread government information and put together a report that is false, inaccurate, and misleading, right then and there, and they should have missed, they shouldn't have done that. You have a right right away to recover what you're losing. Yeah. And that's you come right to me. Got it. Okay. And we'll recover. So it's like that. you identify an error, you get the background check back, or you're not approved or you're deactivated because of something on their background check. You see that it's an error, a wrong name, or someone else's driving history. And that's you know, I guess at the same, you can send something to Checker and then reach out to you. Yeah. Um, I, like I said before earlier, first thing you want to do is dispute. I mean, no matter yeah. what, I'm always going to advise a dispute. And then you come to me. Certain times, I'm going to say, let's see what the dispute says, because certain mm -hmm. times I'll be like, yeah, that error might be a reasonable error. Not often. Mm -hmm. Not often. Um, most of the time, those are background reports. They come back with errors on them. They're usually errors that should not have been made in the first place. Gotcha. 
there usually were things that should have been corrected. And so what we do is we go after those after that company for mm-hmm. falsely accusing you or reporting mm-hmm. you, and we get the money that you're missing. And it, it doesn't cost you anything. You don't have to give mm-hmm. us any money. The Fair Credit Reporting Act provides for attorney's fees. They have to oh, pay wow. my fees. So <laughs> I'm just going to get you what you're losing. That's Interesting. So what would money. I be, let's say I, you know, apply, you know, to drive with a company and, uh, you know, kind of see that there's an error. I come to you to go through this process. Like, what am I potentially losing? Like, I guess, what are my potential damages? How do you, how do you calculate that? First thing I do is I find out what, you know, what are you missing? You know, mm-hmm. what, what money are you supposed to be making? Got it. Were you working for them before? What did your earnings look like? Or, or mm-hmm. are you brand new? If you're brand new, then what are they saying out there? Hey, drive for Uber. You can earn yeah. this much money. They're on, you know, or so, if you're planning to work, if you were planning to work 50 hours yeah, a week, right? Obviously, right. So we, you can't we get have on. to figure out what your loss is, you know, mm-hmm. and and we'll start with that. Now, if it's you know, if it's a small, you're not out of you're not out a long time. I mean, it could be a matter of just recovering your loss, right? Yeah. But there's people out there that it's grotesque. Mm. You know, it's like you're being accused of being a sexual predator, mm. murderer. You've got a rap sheet that's, you know, three pages long and it's just kind of degrading. Yeah. And, you know, you're being told you can't drive for us. And I, I think that there might be a little more value to value to those cases. Yeah. Because of just the general embarrassment that one has to deal with. with dealing Yeah, with. yeah know, I, I would imagine it. It, it, that's like a pretty big error, right? Like yeah. I, I get it if it's like, hey, we messed up, but it was sort of a small thing. But if it's like, hey, we're accusing you of you know, sexual assault and you've never done that. It's like, Hey, that's something that I think there should be a bigger penalty for. And you also said something, you know, I'm no expert in the legal field, but I feel like normally when you hire a lawyer, a lot of times, right, they work on, um, you know, they'll take a, I don't know, a third of the fees. I have no idea if this is right or not, but I feel like I've heard that, you know, Oh, in a judgment, you know, they'll take a third of your fees. It sounds like in this case though, the driver would get the full amount of the money that was lost and the fair credit reporting act would pay you sort of separately, I don't know, your hourly rate or some yeah. predetermined amount. Is that how it works? That's yeah, kind of- so there are, there are laws out there that are mm, set to that's a good thing for the, the driver, playing right? field a little bit, right? I yeah. mean, the person going out there and saying, <laughs> yeah. oh, gee, I lost, you know, I lost $900 this month. Now that to a lot of people is a yeah. lot of money, you know, right. that is the rent, that is a lot, that could sustain you food, your family, feed a family for a yeah. month, $900. Now, a lot of people would look at that and not think it's a lot of money. What lawyer is going to take a case for $900 right. and take 300 Yeah. I'm sorry. I, my billing rate's higher than that. Well, I, I was just thinking oh, that, right? Like a lot right. of lawyers, right, are infamous for charging hundreds of dollars or, you know, you see in the press, oh, they charge thousands of dollars an hour, yeah. right? Certain lawyers. So yeah, I kind of imagine, yeah. like, I really love the way you put it, like $900 is thing. a lot for Their a driver, lawyers. but yeah. Their lawyers are the ones, the firms charging that thousands. they use are the ones <laughs> charging a thousand dollars an hour. Yeah. So a consumer that gets wronged by them shouldn't be buried, yeah. right? You shouldn't be buried by them and have them just, you know. So the law says, hey, we're going to even the playing field. If they get a lawyer that charges the same amount as your lawyer, too yeah. bad, <laughs> you know, and pay their lawyer. And it, it it's also designed to make them say, we got to take a fast look at this thing. Yeah. You know? Cool. We're not going to let this thing draw out litigation too long. Got it. I like that. And I yeah. think uh, the name of the, uh, what, what is it? The Consumer Fair Credit Reporting fair, Act? It's or... called the Fair Credit Reporting Act. Okay. Misnamed. Yeah. Because it really, it should, it, it really should be called the Fair Consumer Reporting yeah. Act. Yeah. That's sort of what I'm feeling. Like this seems like a very well designed for consumers, right? That it's like, hey, we end- is, is I mean, you don't have to get into this, but if you actually read the statute, like mm-hmm. the term consumer report is defined, but the term credit report is not. Mm. So it really should be the Fair Consumer Reporting Act, but whatever. Okay. All right. It's got well, the same rules. <laughs> you can send me the PDF later and I'll uh, I'll take a gander. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so you've mentioned a couple times, uh, you know, the reasons why drivers have been deactivated for background checks. So you mentioned uh, names and, um, you know, I think also like someone else's uh, maybe history, criminal history or driving records. So, I mean, tell me what, what's like the most common reason for drivers who have been deactivated for background check issues? Like what's the most common issue uh, yeah. that you see coming up? Most common issues are number one, mixing people and literally mixing people's names. Mm. It happens all the time. I mean, Larry, I'm going to use you as an example. Your name is Larry Smith. I imagine there's a few of them out there, right? <laughs> I, I've, I, I've, I've met two. I've <laughs> met 
two. I, I I took the bar exam next to one. Okay. And I went to college with another one. <laughs> you know, it was a basketball star on my team. So there I, you you know, I, I, there were two others. So, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of Larry Smiths out there. You got to worry about that kind yeah. of thing, right? But so besides mixing people with the same name, that happens a lot. Mm -hmm. um, there's, you know, misreading the report. So if somebody was... Uh, uh, arrested for a felony and ultimately it was a misdemeanor that was dismissed mm -hmm. there's a lot of just kind of saying charge mm -hmm. felony and leaving it at that and not you know got it not reporting the disposition uh that's common uh the other thing is i mentioned before another very common way is is not picking up the expungements mm -hmm. um people will go back to court and get a, an offense expunged or an arrest expunged and a lot of times we see that those reporting agencies aren't picking up the expungements and just reporting the crime. And then uh, the last one, which is again, very common, I mentioned before, is misreading the, the DMV records. Hmm. Um, if somebody were to have uh, you know, given up a, a, a license, no longer working in commercial, uh, letting it lapse. Uh, I see this a lot. Like if you're in certain kind of drivers, you need to have a medical certificate and they stop getting it and they don't do it because they don't do that anymore. And then there'll be a designation in the DMV that'll say, can't drive unless he shows his medical certificate. Interesting. And that will show up on your class D driver's license, like no driving on a medical cert. And so people will get deactivated for yeah. being like an invalid driver. Those are the four big ones all the time. Got it. So I think it's pretty clear that you're a great resource for any driver, whether they're doing rideshare or food delivery, if they're deactivated for, uh, you know, an issue, um, you know, a faulty background check, um, mm -hmm. an inaccurate background check, you're the guy to talk to. But what about backing up one step? What about, uh, is there anything drivers can do to prevent a faulty background check from ever happening in the first place? Or is it just sort of luck of the draw? Uh, I, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things. Can I change it's my name to something really name. unique? No, don't do anything. <laughs> change your name to a very, very, very weird name. Yeah. And, and don't do it. I mean, it's, it's so hard the way big data works. And, just sort of happens. You know, it, it, it's just, it's, there really is no poison. You know, there is no pill that you can swallow that will stop a bad background report. Yeah. It's out there. The data is lying around and if it connects poorly <laughs> it connects poorly what you can do like we said before you know is make sure that you're on as many platforms as you can be yeah. on uh you know that way you yeah know, no actually that's probably the them, best advice huh yeah i think if one of them knocks you out then you still have your shot to continue make money with the others i think that's probably the best thing you can do yeah. I, I really like that, you know, if you're sort of a rideshare driver, you sign up with Uber and Lyft and then you add one delivery service at sort of a bare minimum. If you're a delivery driver, you sign up for two delivery services at a rideshare service. Just you sort of have that diversification. I mean, even myself, like I'm signed up with Uber, Lyft, DoorDash. Postmates, Uber Eats, you know, Instacart, yeah. like I'm signed up for all of them. And, you know, maybe some of my cards are expired or I might need to do a background check on a few of them. But once you're signed up, even if you don't drive for two, one year, two years, five years, you can actually get back on a lot easier than signing up brand new. And I think this kind of ties into the last thing I wanted to talk to you about um, is really sort of like how these things vary geographically, right? I'm curious, mm -hmm. you know, if you've seen any issues with background checks, right? We we're getting a lot of complaints these days from oversaturation of drivers. You know, there's too many drivers out on the road, yeah. not enough rides. And I feel like I wonder if this has anything to do with background checks. You know, if you're Uber or Lyft, maybe you're more stringent on background checks when you have lots of drivers and maybe you're less stringent when you need drivers, you know, like over the past I, year or two. I mean, I, 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 you know, my, my jaded consumer rights lawyer mind can go there very easily, you know, and say, it, it seems that, you know, sometimes if they're saturated, they might be somebody going, hey, look, you know, we got so many riders over in yeah. this area all competing and they're starting to complain that they're not getting enough. Well, let's, you know, let's do some background checks. Mm. And anybody who's had an accident in the last four years, you're out, you know. Interesting. I, you know, I, I it, <laughs> it, it wouldn't, I mean, I don't know if I put it past that kind of thing from happening, that yeah. they just have to monitor where things are geographic so overloaded they start to find ways yeah. to shrink the you know and then be oh, a little more no strict with the background checks here. we have yeah. nobody let's just kind of let the, everybody in who applies 
Yeah. And I mean, I kind of imagine, right, if you've got a DUI in the past year, they're not going to let you drive no matter what. But, you know, for example, if it's something that's a little, you know, obviously they have to draw the line somewhere, right? And it right. is a person making that decision. So yeah, it could be very easy that the line is a little further or a little further back in right. a lot of these cases. So I do think, yeah, if I'm, if I'm a driver and I'm thinking about it, right, like, hey, you know, if I've been, you know, for whatever small issue, they won't let me on for a background check, um, you know, maybe there's times, you know, in summer, winter, right, yeah. where I can kind of reapply to. I'll say this as a final comment of it, to be honest, yeah. I mean, in truth. The, the fact is, we have to know this. They do have risk management people working mm -hmm. there. You know, that's what that's what's doing this. It's risk management. Yeah. That's, that's you know, balancing out who should be and who should not be able to drive for them. And that's really where it's, it's happening. It's in the risk management. And people are analyzing that and figuring yeah. out what's right and what's not right. Might might their geographical overload or underload have something to do with how risk management's seeing things? I can't see how not. Sure. Yeah. Um, well, I think recapping, uh, I think my my takeaways, you're the expert when it comes to drivers who are deactivated due to inaccurate uh, background checks. And I think uh, I really like the advice you provided, you know, sort of, uh, uh, you know, we talked about the few reasons why um, you can be deactivated and sort of what the most common uh, errors on a background check are, the name and the driving history and confusing with someone else. Um, but also too, like the advice for drivers to, hey, make sure you're on ride share, make sure you're on delivery. And then, uh, um, you know, sort of when an if or when an issue does arise, you know, they can kind of reach out to you. And it's nice to know that your fees are covered by the Fair Credit Reporting Act. Did I get that right? Yes, I did. Yes, um, yes, did. And you can sort of still, uh, you know, kind of get those uh, potential lost wages for any time that uh, you're, you know, unable to drive uh, for that service in question. So I really wanted to highlight again, you know, what you're doing, because I feel like we're actually hearing right, one of the reasons I want to have you on. I feel like we're hearing more um, uh, about these types of issues from our audience. And I just never like, you know, I mean, you're a consumer rights uh, lawyer. So I think we're on the same page. My whole business yeah. is sort of, you know, for the consumers, right, for the drivers. Right. And so I think we're sort of on the same page. Like, I get it, you know, for the companies, it's sometimes easy to overlook a driver. But I really love what you said about that $900 for an individual driver. Like, that's a lot of money. And, you know, those are the drivers uh, we want to help. So appreciate what you're doing. And if there's any uh, final words, feel free to let us know, you know, what you're up to and where folks can learn more about you. I've got smithmarco.com pulled up. But if there's a better way to get a hold of you let us know and we'll also add you that to do the show that. Notes. absolutely thank you so much it's such a pleasure to talk to your audience thank you so much Harry. i really appreciate it you can reach us there we have a website protectingconsumerrights.com. you can cool. go there it's the same site and you'll find us all right cool larry well i'll uh definitely add that to the show notes and everyone should uh bookmark your site uh drivers out there in case they are deactivated due to an error with their background check so larry thanks for coming on again thanks so much for having me Take care.